So this summer I'm going to go do some summer sales um, in Texas and that's a pretty odd thing for me to be doing for a couple reasons. One, I'm like kind of older than the usual crowd that takes that kind of job. But it's also just very contrary to my normal way of being. So I thought I'd make this video just to kind of explain why I'm doing it. It all started this last summer I was up at Bear Lake with my family and I was just on a little morning run and happened to run into an old friend from college and she and I caught up just really briefly. I mentioned that I had been a teacher but was done teaching and wasn't sure what I was going to do next. So she reached out to me a couple weeks later and just said, hey, I know summer sales kind of has like a bad reputation, but I have this connection to a summer sales company and if you're interested, you should you should totally give it a chance. So my immediate thought was just like, well, that's very kind, but I'm obviously not going to do that. Um, but I didn't dismiss it outright. I guess uh, like up until this point in my life, I've actually had really good luck with just the types of things that land in my lap. My past few working gigs have been just those same kind of situations where I didn't even go find them. They just sort of found me and they all turned out to be really great. So I didn't want to like spurn the gift of the universe by telling her no way Jose. So I, I kind of decided to at least give it a chance, but truly I just did not think it was going to be something I would ever do. So during this time that I was sitting with the decision, uh, I was listening to a lot of Jordan Peterson, specifically his biblical lecture series. And I'm actually kind of hit or miss with Jordan Peterson, but the biblical lecture series is really good. And uh, he said some things that just kind of like resonated with me um, with respect to the summer sales. Let me play a clip and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Is basically God comes to Abraham and just says, go, get going, man, do something, do something, get going. And the Lord said unto Abram, and this is, this, is the, this is the opening of the story, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And this is one of those phrases where every clause is significant. Go somewhere you don't understand. That's the first thing. Get thee out of thy country. So you have to go into the unknown. And that's, that's God's first command. Go into the unknown. Because you already know what you know. And so, and that's not enough unless you think you're enough. And if you're not enough and you don't think you're enough, then you have to go where you haven't been. And so that's the first commandment to Abraham. It's like, okay, that, that's a good one. That makes perfect sense. So yeah, that clip did a good job of causing me to reconsider summer sales as a great opportunity to really go and do something, you know, get out of my country and, and shake things up for the better. But I still had a few other concerns. Like one, I just kind of thought like, oh, it's not my personality. Um, and then maybe even a little more than that was like, maybe there will be some uh, moral questionability. Like I've heard some horror stories of some salespeople that quit early because they just felt like they were, you know, convincing the weak minded to spend money they didn't have on things they didn't need. So I didn't want to get into any situation like that. Um, but it even seemed like even when sales isn't like that kind of situation, it still seems just like a little morally questionable to me or like it's some sort of, you know, human effort that's actually not contributing to society in any way. It's just kind of being a middleman and, and siphoning off some, <laughs> some of the profits of, of people who actually are contributing to society. So yeah, there's just kind of this like moral questionability to it. Um, but so Jordan Peterson said something else that really kind of affected me with that concern. So here's another clip. It's predicated on the idea that you can do nothing, say, but follow your bliss, and that will take you ever higher to enlightenment, and that's not the union idea at all. The union idea is that what you most need will be found where you least want to look. So there's this story, King Arthur, there's this story of King Arthur, the they're all in a round table, right? King Arthur and his knights, they're all equals. They're all superordinate, but they're all equals. And they go off to look for the Holy Grail. And the Holy Grail is the container of the redemptive substance, whatever that is. And, but they don't know where to look. So where do you look when you don't know where to look? For something you need desperately, but have lost. Well, each of the knights goes into the forest at the point that looks darkest to him. And that's Jungian psychoanalysis in a nutshell. 
It's like that which you fear and avoid, that which you hold in contempt, that which disgusts you and that you avoid. That's the gateway to what you need to know. I've really come to appreciate that Jung quote, you know, that which we most need will be found where we least want to look. And to me, that's exactly how I feel about doing summer sales this summer. I kind of feel like I need it, even though I don't want to do it. But I, I feel like I need it in sort of like a, a character development sort of way. Like I've been living one way and learning certain ways of being associated with that, but I need to like swing the pendulum over and and try some other things. I think there's a few frameworks that kind of really help make sense of this character development idea of like going in a new direction. And one of them comes from the uh, like medicine wheel of Native American lore. Um, this is a book called Seven Arrows that I got from a bookstore that was going out of business. Just felt like a totally fortuitous find. I'd never seen the book anywhere else, never even heard of it, but just happened to kind of like see it on sale and crack it open and was immediately impressed. Um, just kind of has a lot of wisdom in it. Um, so speaking of this medicine wheel, it says, At birth, each of us is given a particular beginning place with the four great directions on the medicine wheel. This starting place gives us our way of perceiving things which will then be our easiest and most natural way throughout our lives. But any person who perceives from only one of the four great directions will remain just a partial man. For example, a man who possesses only the gift of the north will be wise, but he will be a cold man, a man without feeling. And the man who lives only in the east will have the clear, far-sighted vision of the eagle, but he will never be close to things. He that goes on to say, like, even if you've explored two or three of the directions, you're still not whole. You have to explore all four directions to achieve wholeness. Um, yeah, after each of us has learned of our beginning gift, our first place on the medicine wheel, we must then grow by seeking understanding in each of the four great ways. Only in this way can we become full, capable of balance and decision in what we do. So, um, if you're like me, that it sounds very wise, but it also reminds you of Avatar The Last Airbender. And that's, I think, the last framework that uh, makes this decision to go to summer sales like very relevant to me. I'm a huge fan of Avatar The Last Airbender. So my decision to go to summer sales reminds me a ton of Aang learning to earthbend because it was actually very foreign to him, a totally different way of thinking from airbending. And he, that was a steep learning curve for him to figure out how to think like an earthbender. I don't understand what went wrong. He did it exactly the way you did. Maybe there's another way. What if I came at the boulder from a different angle? No, that's the problem. You've got to stop thinking like an airbender. There's no different angle, no clever solution, no trickety trick that's gonna move that rock. You've got to face it head on. I just panicked. I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. You blew it. You had a perfect stance and perfect form. But when it came right down to it, you didn't have the guts. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, you are sorry. If you're not tough enough to stop the rock, then you could at least give it the pleasure of smushing you instead of jumping out of the way like a jelly-boned whip. Eventually, he has some breakthroughs, of course, and learns to earthbend, but... Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, going to do summer sales this summer feels a lot like standing in front of a boulder rolling toward me, and I'm going to stand my ground, and if it crushes me, so be it. I'm prepared for that rather than jump out of the way because I know I need to learn to, to think a little differently than what I'm used to. The other thing that this reminds me of is also I, m I mentioned kind of feeling some moral objections to um, summer sales, and that reminds me a lot of when Aang learned to firebend that first time with Zhang Zhang. Look, careful! Ah! Now that's firebending! Aang, you'll hurt yourself! I wonder how the juggler did it. Zhang Zhang tried to tell me that I wasn't ready. I wouldn't listen. I'm never gonna firebend again. 
You'll have to eventually. No, never again. And he learns that, like, yeah, fire's powerful, but it also can get out of control pretty quickly and hurt people. And uh, that's kind of how I feel a little bit about not necessarily sales in particular, but but like the the way of being that's associated with sales. I feel like I've seen that do a lot of harm. And maybe that's kind of why I've avoided it a lot and tried to have other ways of being. Um, but just like Jung said, I think that which I most need is where I least want to look. And I think that's where I need to look right now. So uh, that's why I'm going out this summer to do summer sales. Wish me luck. Hopefully it'll be a great character developing experience. Nietzsche's most trenchant critiques of traditional morality, let's say, is that most of what passes for morality isn't morality. It's just cowardice. It's not that I'm a good person and I don't hurt you. It's that I'm afraid to hurt you. And because I don't want to admit that I'm afraid to hurt you, then I say I'm moral because then I can mask my essential fear and cowardice in a guise of morality. And that happens far more often than you would think because harmless and moral are by no means the same thing. Hypersimplified morality stops you from tapping into deeper recesses of your psyche. And it's partly because they're primal forces. It's not surprising that you don't want to have anything to do with them, that you stay away from situations where they might make themselves manifest. But the problem is by denying the worst in yourself in that manner, suppressing it, you preclude the possibility of the best. Because no one can be a good person without integrating their capacity for aggression territories, if you go to university and you study biology or you study physics or, or any discipline, you're in a territory, right? You're in the territory that all the scholars have established and then as you master the discipline you move out beyond the established territory into the unknown and, and that's a new land, right? Maybe it's even a land of your enemies for that matter, but it's a new land and the frontier is always in front of you. And so, you know, when the earth was less inhabited than it is now, the frontier was the psychological frontier and the geographical frontier was the same thing and now they've separated to some degree because there's not so much geographical frontier but there's the frontier is a place that never disappears and the land that's beyond the land that you know is always there and it's always where you should go and all of that's packed into these what four phrases <laughs>